Hello, I'm Jacob, and I'm going to tell you something about the Renaissance lute today. Um, the period we're covering really is a long 16th century. It's from the late 15th to the early 17th. It's the period in which what we call the Renaissance lute flourished. Um, just a quick bit of history. The lute uh, came to southern Europe in the Middle Ages. Uh, the Moors brought it with them. Uh, it quickly went native and diverged rapidly from its Arabic cousin. So the Renaissance, European Renaissance lute became a very different thing from the Arabic lute of the time. And of course, the Renaissance lute died out eventually in Europe, but the Arabic lute has gone on and on and it has been a continuous tradition. So that's one big difference between us and our Arab cousins, our Middle Eastern cousins. Um, if you look at paintings from the 14th and 15th centuries, you see precursors of the Renaissance lute with four courses, a course is a pair of strings, or five courses. Those would have been played with a plectrum, something like this. This happens to be a quill. So the lute would have been suitable mainly for strumming or for playing single lines or drones. But by the end of the 16th century, when the plectrum was dispensed with, um, the fingertips came into action. And that, of course, enabled players to play polyphonic music, music of multiple parts, many voices, as in... using the flesh of the fingertips. Um, this happened in tandem with developments in music. Vocal polyphony of the late 15th century was flowering, composers like Josquin and others, and lute players ad adapted their music for the instrument. And even when they weren't necessarily arranging vocal music, they were writing fantasies and other freely composed forms, which are very much inspired by vocal music. So that's the model for the contrapuntal style of lute playing of the 16th century. The instrument itself, uh, for most of the century, had six pairs of strings. I say six pairs, actually the top was traditionally single, the others are double, and at least in the early part of the century, the bass strings are in octaves, like that. Um, by the early 17th century, actually by already the very late 16th, they were adding more bass strings and beginning to experiment with extending the instrument toward the bass end, rather like what happened to the viol in its later life too, where, more, where an extra bass string was added. Um, the music is notated in tablature. Now the beauty of tablature is that it's a form of notation which tells you not what notes to play, but where to put your fingers. It's a bit like painting by numbers. This means that you can play the same bit of music on different instruments and it comes out at different pitches, but that becomes immaterial because the tablature will be the same. Um, where this becomes an issue, of course, is when you're accompanying singers, which is why it's very handy to have a collection of lutes like this, so that you can use larger lutes to accompany lower voice singers, smaller lutes to accompany higher voice singers. Just to demonstrate what I mean, if I play the same few chords, So keep in mind that chord. This is a lute tuned in G. Now if I play those same three chords, here's the one I just ended with. Again, keep in mind the sound of this chord. This is a lute tuned in E, the same pitch as a modern classical guitar, in fact. This one, if you count carefully, you'll see there are seven pairs of strings. So this is a 1600-1610-ish model, which has an extended bass. Here's that chord again. showing the low bass note. So 
So this is a lute in D, also called a bass lute. So the lute, like the viol, or in fact like the violin family, comes in different sizes. Um, there are surviving lutes of many sizes, ranging from small treble lutes in D to lutes much larger than this even. So this one tuned in D, that one tuned in E, that one tuned in G are three of the quite common sizes we find. Um, just to take up one of the six course lutes again, this is probably the earliest style of instrument, six course lute that I have. This would be from the first half of the 16th century, this, this long teardrop shaped design. Um, this is a copy of a lute which is in a museum in England, the Warwick County Museum. Um, a very special instrument and actually you can hear it in action in the most recent video on my YouTube channel if you're interested in hearing it being played. And just to demonstrate the tuning, which will be very familiar to those who've seen the clip about the viol, because it's tuned in fourths with a third in the middle, just the same as a six string viol. So we have a fourth, another fourth, a major third, a fourth, and another fourth. I'd just like to tell you something to conclude about related plucked instruments of the 16th century. Um, of course this only scratches the surface and it would be possible to um, talk to you at much greater length about the lute, but this is really just a little taster and there's lots more information to be found, of course. Um, but other instruments that were around, other plucked instruments at the same time, include the viola, or viola da mano, the viola da mano as it was called in Italy to distinguish it from the bowed viol, the viola da arco, um, tuned similarly to a lute, but in Spain and to some extent also in Italy it was a favorite instrument to use as an alternative and it has a subtly different and currently out of tune sound to it. Um, and there is music written especially for the viola. One of its strengths is that it's particularly good in the high register because of the long neck, a stronger sound in the upper notes. This one has a vaulted back made of cypress, quite common. Another related instrument, which looks at first sight like a small viola, and in fact, it was sometimes called exactly that. This is a four course Renaissance guitar. It's tuned like the top four strings of a modern classical guitar, but a fourth higher top note A. Um, this one has a rather extraordinary fluted back, as you can see, rosewood. Um, this was used for strumming accompaniments, but there is also a repertoire for solo guitar, which doesn't really differ in style from the solo Renaissance lute repertoire, except that obviously it's rather cleverly crafted to fit on just the four courses of strings. And finally, I want to show you the cittern which is strung with wire and played with a plectrum. This was around particularly in the second half of the 16th century, is inspired by ancient Greek instruments. In fact, our word cittern comes from the Greek kitara, which of course is the name for the lyre. Also out of tune. Um, very, very flat. Makes a good loud projected sound used almost, almost exclusively in ensemble playing, although again, there is a small solo repertoire surviving, particularly from the late 16th and early 17th centuries. So that's a quick introduction to the many plucked instruments of the 16th century.